Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel Blue Lady Couture. Today I'm going to be working on the next project in my mission for 2022 which is to create an Edwardian summer history banding lookbook. If you haven't already do go and check out my introduction video to this project where I take you through uh, the design phase and show you a little bit about what I'm going to be making for this project. So my aim today is to make a 1915 inspired skirt from linen. Um, this is available to order in my Etsy shop and I call it the Beatrix skirt. It's a fabulous skirt to wear as part of a modern wardrobe but with a bit of historical flair. It has the wonderful fullness of early 20th century skirts um, but it's short and practical enough um, to not be cumbersome when you're wearing it and it also has these amazing pockets on it. So ever since I kind of came up for, with the design for this skirt, I have wanted to make one for myself uh, and I haven't got around to it until now. I'm finally doing it as part of my Edwardian summer lookbook and I'm going to take you along to show you how I make it and then we are going to have a little bit of a video slash photo shoot outing uh, where I'll get to wear it out in the wilds that is one of the reasons why I'm doing this project as a series um, is that I want to be able to get some fabulous lifestyle shots featuring that wonderful history banding aesthetic uh, which I can then use for my social media and marketing for my business. I've said before it's one of the areas that I really struggle with. I have a tendency to just throw things on the mannequin in the corner of my workroom and get, take some quick snaps um, and use those for my marketing uh, whereas it really is the aesthetic shots, you know, the actual wearing them out and about that sells products. So that's what my plan is for this year, is to really get on top of getting those really wonderful photographs and videos um, to help sell my products. It gives you a chance to see a little bit behind the scenes of how I work, how I make things, and of course you'll get the lovely bit of video footage when we go out and about at the end as well. If you're a client of Blue Lady Couture then I hope it inspires you to make a purchase with me um, but if you are a sewer yourself and you're watching this for inspiration then I really do hope this inspires you. Maybe one day I will sell the patterns for these for these uh, uh, garments but it's not, it's not today. Um, so in the meantime, I just hope it inspires you to really embrace your, that, that history bounding aesthetic um, and shows you a little bit how you can incorporate that into your wardrobe for this summer. So normally I can get one of these Beatrix skirts made in an afternoon. So let's see how I get on. I'm not normally videoing it, so it always takes me a little bit longer when I'm videoing it, but I'm going to crack on and get started. So I'm going to be using this rather glorious dark purple linen um, it's called the plum linen and um, if you you're ordering in my in my Etsy shop um, this is the plum colorway it's a really lovely deep purple it's absolutely fabulous um, the reason I'm using this is because a it is just fabulous um, and it's going to match perfectly with well not match but it's going to tone perfectly with a blouse that I already own which is my fabulous Mary Poppins stripy blouse uh, that I made a couple of years ago um, and I've wanted to make a skirt to to go with it um, that, since then and I haven't got around to it until now so I'm also really keen to try and use some fabric out of my stash rather than buying new fabric for this project if I can um, in this row here this is all my linen remnants um, so this is all remnants that are over a meter um, and some of these are, are bigger pieces as well depending on, on what I've been ordering and, and what projects I've got on um, but yeah, all my remnants are over a metre. And the thing with the Beatrix skirt is I can get it out of two metres because it's a lot shorter length than any of my other Edwardian skirts. Um, yeah, I can get it out of two metres. And I happen to have two metre, well, a little over two metres in these two remnant pieces here. Um, so I'm going to use those to make this skirt. Right, let's get this cut out, shall we? So 
So this is one of the patterns that I use for my Edwardian skirts. You can see it's getting a bit dog-eared now because I make dozens of these skirts for my clients. I've also made hundreds over the years. I've never really counted. One day I will count up how many skirts I've, I've made to date. Um, but yeah, so it's a little bit dog-eared. Um, as you can probably see, um, it's not a full-length skirt. Um, what I tend to do just for, for ease of handling um, and because my lengths often vary so much um, I use these shorter length uh, panels um, and then I just follow on the line um, as I need to the length that I need. I can get the front panel out of here then these skirts I make to approximately 70 centimeters in length okay so now i'm just uh, marking out the back panels on the other remnant piece of plum linen so here is the side back panel um, and i've marked it with a little b in this bottom corner so i know that these are the back two panels so now i'm just going to mark out the center back panel this is the one that's going to have that lovely pleating into the center back um, to give that really lovely early 20th century um, effect to the skirt. Um, so for that I need to add on um, an allowance um, from the base pattern piece. So yeah, so I normally allow 8 inches, um, but on this occasion it's going to have to be 7, if I measure that, you can see it's just at 7 inches. Um, and it's just, that's just one of the, the things with um, when you're using remnant pieces, you kind of have to work with what you've got left and what shapes you've got left um, and I just don't quite have enough to normally what I would do um, is shift this down a little bit more um, so it can come over a little bit against the line of this panel here and you can see that gives me a lot more room just by moving it down a little bit but I don't quite have the length um, on this remnant piece to, to do that so I'll have to make do with seven inches um, but that's fine so I just tweak the, the pleating accordingly and then the other thing I like to do um, is use this line as the line at the edge of this, this pattern piece. So it just gives that little bit extra swing and flare um, out towards the hem of the skirt. pieces I need to cut out are the pocket pieces uh, and then the waistband and the, uh, the placket for the, the opening. So that's the pocket piece uh, cut out and if you're wondering why it's this weird shape um, this will basically fold over and if I just that that shows you how so that will be the pocket so there's so the side seam and that's the the front so the waistband i cut to four inches wide and in terms of length i cut it to three inches bigger than my natural waist which gives me my overlap for the placket in the back a little bit of ease and my seam allowances From the uh, remnant piece of the waistband, I measure eight inches, and that bit can go in my remnant bin. If there's, there's enough there to make another placket if it needs to be, if I'm short at any point in the future from the same colour fabric. Right now, we can start prepping uh, these pieces to go together. So the Beatrix skirt has a nice bit of ribbon detailing uh, just along the top of the pocket just give a bit of support and a little bit of you know just a decorative detail um, which is kind of nice and um, it has little buttons on it as well so i'm just having a look at my ribbons just to see which one i'm going to trim it with so i do have some nice dark purple velvet but i also have this lilac which is rather nice too Thank you. 
side panels prepped and so the pockets are now in place as you can see um, and I've overlocked right down this edge caught in the edge of the pocket as well and there's a double stitching line um, along the base of the pocket as well so that catches in the raw edge on the inside of the pocket where it's folded under uh, and by double stitching it just gives it a bit more uh, reinforcement as well along the bottom there so now I just need to finish overlocking the rest of the panels and then we can start putting the skirt together. I start by attaching the, uh, the two ends in place um, and then working out where the uh, centre front of the waistband will be, um, which obviously is not quite in the centre front of the, or it's not quite at just the halfway point of the waistband, it's a little bit over because of the placket overlap, obviously one side of the waistband will be shorter than the other. Um, so once I figure that out, um, I pin that to the centre front of the skirt uh, and then I just work backwards from the centre front uh, pinning the waistband in place as I go and then when I get to the the back panel um, so here we have the the placket um, and the what is the centre back uh, seam line is down here um, obviously this is I have seven inches um, excess on there which I'm going to pleat in to uh, that gap there and I just put a couple of uh, uh, pleats in uh, and I tend to just do this by eye because it's just the two pleats it's not anything that needs anything particularly complicated doing with it but I always make sure that that for the, the the pleat that's going to sit over the centre back sits nice and snugly along that centre back line so it's not too gappy just pop a pin in to secure it and then I put the second pleat in. Um, I normally um, sit it just a little bit back from the, the other pleat underneath um, so that they're overlapped but not completely on top of one another. Just so there's not too much bulk sitting right under here, especially if I've got to get the, the buttons and I've got to get the buttonhole in onto the, the waistband there as well. So you don't want it too bulky there where it's overlapping. like so and then I just repeat on the other side. So these are just my ribbon hanging loops which I'm just putting there so I don't forget about them because I always end up forgetting them.
stitched in place on both sides. Uh, I've even got the buttonhole in the centre back as well. So now it's just the hem to go and, and then it's just the button details to finish it off. So for the hem I have overlocked it all the way around uh, and then all I'm going to do on this style is simply uh, press it up about an inch and a quarter um, and then I do a double stitch line um, to, to hold it in place. One of the things I do when I cut these panels out is, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I very slightly at the point where the the actual the actual hemline is going to be um i i taper in the uh, the, the the turn up allowance for the hem it's a little bit because obviously it's a a flared skirt um that obviously gets wider as you go down and when you then turn that back up you then have too much excess of fabric to try and pleat in these neatly um so what i find is that if i taper um off each of the the, the bottoms of the panels um it just takes out some of that excess um when you come to fold it back over and with this linen especially you can just just sort of stretch it and ease it just a little bit as well it's got a little bit of giving it just to to do that and then when you steam it and press it um it just it, it just stays in place um so that's what i'm doing now so i always start at the center back because that is on a, a straight of grain line um there's no tapering on there so i just fold that over as my guide you will see when I make some of my other skirt styles, the longer skirt styles, um, I do, I, I used to put a, a horsehair braid, crinoline braid um, in the, the hem of those, just to give them a bit more body and a bit more, a bit more swish. Um, but with this being a shorter style, it doesn't necessarily need quite so much uh, volume, you know, in the, in the hem. Uh, you won't be able to see for the angle of the camera, but um, I can see it. there's just a little bit of excess um, in here, but by, by pressing it in, I'm just pressing these little wrinkles, um, it just sets it in place. So the last job I have to do on my Beatrix skirt is to put some decorative buttons on. Uh, and on the Beatrix skirt, I like to do little silk covered buttons, just to add that little bit extra something. Um, because the buttons are kind of a focal point, there's two just on the edges of the, the pockets, and there obviously two on the waistband that, that fasten the skirt in the back. Um, but because the, it has the ones on the pockets, which are just decorative, because we all know the Edward Hins and in the 1910s, they, they just love to put buttons on things, but the sake of putting buttons on things. Um, so yeah, so I'd like to say they're a little bit more decorative, so if you do that, I'm going to cover them in some silk and wow look at this silk people um so this silk is um they're samples from a company uh, based in Suffolk where they still weave the silk here in England uh, and they have catalogues going back well the, the, to, the, to the 18th century as far as I'm aware um but yeah they will basically weave silk to their patterns in any colour you can imagine um, and this is uh, a, a sample uh, piece that I had made just to show some different colour combinations um, when I was working with, with different clients and they wanted something a bit different. Um, so yeah, so it's not a usable piece of silk for, for anything else but for buttons it is perfect. Thank you. 
well, I think that worked. <laughs> I really enjoyed making this skirt this afternoon. Um, sometimes it's nice just to do a quick little project like that, just to keep the creative juices flowing, as it were. Don't forget, the Beatrix skirt is available to order in my Etsy shop, which I'll pop a link to in the description box down below. And it's available in a huge range of colours, and it is made to your measurements. If, however, you prefer to make clothes yourself, then I do hope you found this video inspiring and I hope you've enjoyed following along with the rest of my Edwardian summer lookbook. So I'm really hoping it's getting you as excited for the spring and the summer as I am. If you like this video, do be sure to give it a thumbs up on the little thumbs up icon down below and do subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you can be notified when my next video goes out and you'll also be notified of all the upcoming videos in my Edwardian summer lookbook. Be sure to not miss out on those. In the meantime, I will see you in my next video. So take care guys. Bye.